Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. We are here in Miami um, for the Super Bowl, and it is already Thursday. Today is the day that people just really start flooding in and actually getting here uh, to South Beach for the Super Bowl. This is the last weekend of football, and today, of course, is a huge day because today the NFL owners will be presenting their proposal to the NFL players. The NFL owners have their party tonight. Um, uh, I won't disclose the location, and then the NFLPA has their party tonight, and um, don't, 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 don't. anyway, the NFLPA and both sides will figure out if this thing is close enough that they can make a deal or if both sides are going to go in their corners and fight it out. The NFL owners want 17 games. I'm not sure that that's in the best interest of the players. When you think of how short the offseason is now, where guys are literally getting body parts re-sewn onto themselves to get ready to play again, I'm not sure that adding another game to that is going to help it, but you know, who am I to decide that? But we're here and it poured last night, power went off for us. But again, you know what always happens no matter what when it rains, well, the sun will still rise the next day. So it seems like everybody is beginning to get on board with the Mike McCarthy hire. Here we are three weeks later, and um. Or is it four weeks now? We had so many people that were looking for, you know, Urban Meyer and looking for Lincoln Riley or, you know, some of the other guys and things out there. I want to know from you guys, what are your thoughts on Mike McCarthy and crew? A crew of coaches that have 167 years experience. And it seems like even our players are actually beginning to look forward to this change. Uh, Troy Aikman said that the Cowboys made the best coaching hire that they could. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Dallas Cowboys made a great coaching hire. Um, and Jimmy Johnson even chimed in on what went wrong with Jason Garrett. You know, and he said, sometimes you just have to be able to grit it out and dig deep to make it work. And he just didn't think that Jason Garrett and the crew could, could achieve that. Now, me personally, I like the idea. I think that the problem in the past, and I've said this before, is the philosophy for the Cowboys was antiquated. And that's not to say that Mike McCarthy is you know, going to be innovative like a lot of the college coaches coming out. But everything that we had was always pointing back to the Dallas Cowboys of old. You know, the flex defense was incredible when it first came out. You know, having Randy White off the ball where he could have better vision and things and be able to rush the passer. But the other teams caught up to it. It's not a thing that it was originally. In the same way, a lot of things that used to be done have to evolve. But where our coaching staff always had been was everything that the Cowboys did the last time they were great in the 90s. All of the players, the coaches, all of them had that same philosophy that didn't alter much from the 90s. Now make no mistake about it, one of the reasons why that worked so well was because you had the assemblance of incredible talent. There wasn't a salary cap, so you could stockpile players in there. And when you had an offensive line that literally opened up holes that were 10 feet wide for Emmett Smith, the all-time leading rusher, you could do things. And if you were Troy Aikman, to have that offensive line that kept you protected, to have that generational running back behind you, to have a Michael Irvin out there to throw, and to have a defense that was number one in the NFL that took the ball away, it's pretty easy to coach. You don't have to get cutesy when you have Larry Allen who can literally bench press a refrigerator with one hand. He just pushes people out the way. I don't care what you had for play calling when you had 
that much greater talent than everybody else. So the problem lies in you don't have head and shoulders of talent above what everybody else does now. It's evenly matched, in which case this is where having an offense that has the ball where they don't think you're going to be makes all the difference in the world. This is when play action, which is something that's more of a newer in vogue thing, when the Cowboys were doing it five years ago, about 21% of the time, that was one of the top teams doing play action. Now you're talking about teams doing it 30 and 40% of the time. And you see the difference of what it did for a guy like Jared Goff. Jared Goff, by no stretch of imagination, was the most dynamic quarterback out there. But when they started to run that with Sean McVay and having um, a great running back, that could take a screenplay to the house, you were putting the ball in the hands of a playmaker where he has the advantage as opposed to putting a ball in a playmaker's hand where everybody knows where he's going and now you've got to fight 10, 11 guys. That's the difference. So when I think about Mike McCarthy and I think about this assemblance of coaches, this isn't all just straight Green Bay coaches that all have the same mindset of Mike McCarthy, you're getting different perspectives of guys that have been successful in other places. Defensive coordinator from Minnesota, you've seen what he's done. You've seen Mike Nolan who coached you know, Ray Lewis and is coaching a guy like Demario Davis in New Orleans who's had head coaching experience. You've got all of these different eyes and different ideas that you can feed off of and I think it's gonna be good. And now as you start to hear the players, the players love Jason Garrett. And I, I you know, I'm assuming that why wouldn't you love him? You know, he, he's your friend, he doesn't kill you, he doesn't cuss you out. But I think back to my history teacher, and maybe one of the reasons why I actually enjoy history so much, was Colonel Michener, who was a Marine in World War II. Colonel Michener, when you went into his classroom that first couple of days, he was like a freaking drill sergeant. He was mean, he yelled, and it was literally like you were going to freaking boot camp. And most people were like, man, I hate this guy. But I got to tell you, I learned more from him about history and life. And still to this day, he's one of the few teachers that I really look back and think about more than anyone else. He wasn't there to be your best friend. He was there to get the job done, to get you the most out of you, to make you succeed. He wasn't there to be your friend. And so those guys that are the ones that are the nice guys, the friend guys, to take it easy on you, they're not the ones that get you to succeed. And I'm hoping that now that, you know, everybody's kind of gone through, said their pleasantries about Jason Garrett and everything, that now they're beginning to get excited. Dak Prescott, you know, at first was like, man, I've never had a coaching change before. But now it seems like, you know, he's looking at the resume. He's thinking about the West Coast offense and what that's going to do. He's thinking about um, play action and things that will go to his strengths. For me, so many times I questioned why we would do the same thing. If you know that your quarterback is good out of the pocket, doing bootlegs, if he's good at play action, where you've got eight men in the box and they're all crashing the line for Zeke Elliott, why we would not do things that suited the talent that we had. We kept trying to do the same old stuff that like we had Larry Allen still there with Emmett Smith. I'm looking forward to this change and looking forward to seeing how if Dak can take another step and elevate that game even more and to see this defense that has some playmakers on there, if they can be put in positions to succeed. So with that being said, I got to get ready to go to the grocery store. 
and we're going to be bringing you some more content. I got something really big going on tonight. I can't wait to share with you guys. And we'll be back downtown at NFL Experience until probably about 5 o'clock today. Then we've got to come back and get ready for an event. So I hope you guys stay tuned. We're going to be bringing you some more from the Super Bowl. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I'm glad the sun came back up. <laughs>